At this point, what like percentage of your fans call you Sloan versus Dayglow? They'll address me as both at the same time. <laughs> so like it's like Sloan. <laughs> like it's your Day last Glow. name? <laughs> yeah, or like Mr. Glow. It's, it's it seems like the whole thing. Hey friends, it's your girl Emily Curl. We're here at iHeartRadio Studios hanging out with Dayglow. Let's give it up for Dayglow! Woo! So nice to meet you finally in person. Yeah, it's great. It's good to be uh, here in the studio. You know, it's wild. Like we are one of our very first interviews, Zoom interviews ever in 2020 mm. was you. Wow. And it is insane to see like how fast you have grown, what life has looked like for you mm. lately. Like, are you keeping up with it? Has it registered to you? Like this is your life now? Register is an interesting uh, word, I guess. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Like it's been really strange. Um, that's how I'd describe it. Really it's strange. strange. <laughs> yeah. um, well, we know you pretty well from doing these interviews, but we want our audience to get to know you a little bit better. So today we're playing a game called 15 First. So I have 15 different scenarios we're gonna run through and I want you to tell me the story behind each one. Okay. Are you ready? I think so. Here we go, question one, 15 First. Dago, what was the first concert you ever went to? I saw OK Go, the oh. uh, band that does like the music videos and everything. And it was amazing. Very, very involved show, high production. I don't know how they pulled it off, and it was great. I was 15. 15, yeah. wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about, what was the first job you ever had? My first job I ever had was essentially this. So um, I didn't really have a job in high school. I, yeah, I you mean, I kind of did like stuff. I like, I worked at <laughs> camps and stuff, oh, but yeah, I didn't really okay. get paid. So this is my first paid job, oh, wow. yeah. Were you, I feel like you'd be a good camp counselor. Were you ever a camp counselor? I, I was, and I get that often actually, so yeah. <laughs> Question three, who was the first person who told you they loved your music? I had a friend named Mark, who I ate lunch with every day in high school. Shout out Mark. And um, he, I played Can I Call You Tonight for him, and he was like, I don't necessarily understand why there's so much like uh, echo on your vocals, but this is really good. What yeah. does Mark think about that, that now? That was one of the first comments. <laughs> I, I think uh, he he lives in, um, uh, I just saw him in Indianapolis. Um, so that was fun. That's so funny. Yeah. Did that comment make you change anything or did you keep it? No, no, yeah, it was once the song was done and I was like, yeah, I mean, that's good feedback. Yeah, so. interesting. Okay, what about, what's the first song you ever played for your parents? It must've been a cover of some sort, like me playing as a musician. I think must have been Bright Eyes' first day of my life. Ooh. Mm, yeah. So that was some of the first music that you covered? Singer-songwriter stuff. Yeah, yeah Connor okay. Oberst I loved when I was, you know, more angsty. <laughs> more angsty. Okay, question five. The first time you went by Dayglow. First time I went by Dayglow was when I was about 17. I came up with the project name. I, I didn't really release music until Fuzzy Rain was out, mm. and I don't remember the first time somebody like addressed me as Dayglow, but I guess shortly after in Where college did, or something. How did it come about, the name? Uh, it's the name of a song. So there's an artist named Brazos who has a song called Dayglow. It's like D-A-Y space G-L-O. I was self-aware enough when I was 16 that I was like, I don't want to think too hard about it because if I come up with a name while I'm 16, that's like cool now, it might not be cool later. That's so I just went with something that already existed and um, I feel okay about it. At this point, what like percentage of your fans call you Sloan versus Dayglow? It's gotten to be, they'll address me as both at the same time. <laughs> So like it's like Sloan, like it's your Day last Glow. name, <laughs> yeah, or like Mr. Glow. It's it seems like the whole thing. So I just go with whatever. I know? like Mr. Glow. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. good. Okay, question six. What about the first time you met your wife? Um, I met Reagan at a skate park. Believe it or not, that sounds very grunge. I was into skateboarding at the time, and she had some friends that like went to the skate park. We barely ever went to skate parks, so like- But just randomly happened to that, be there? That's where we met, yeah. Oh my God, what was the mm -hmm. meet cue? What was the opening line? I don't know, just, hey, <laughs> yeah, how's it going? Do y'all still skate to this day? No, no, <laughs> It was just no. the one time. I mean, I mean, I mean, kind of, but it's, you know, gotta protect my wrists. Okay, question seven, kind of going off of that. What was the very first song you ever played for Reagan? The year of your original music? Of my own music. So I actually found out my very first headline show that I sold tickets at was at a place called Scoot Inn in Austin. There's like a venue, which is small in and of itself, but there's like a room inside that somehow I like got them to use as the venue. It held like 70 people or something. Oh wow, okay. And um, she was there, yeah. And I didn't really know 
her yet. So but, she saw one of your very first live shows? Yeah. And she just came with some friends. So like she didn't know who I was or anything. And yeah, it's cool. Wow. Yeah, very first show. Okay, that makes me think of the Taylor Swift song Mastermind. Maybe she did know and she's like, I'm going for this. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. When was the first time you knew your dog Benny was the dog for you? So we have this breeder that like lives in Oklahoma and she's very specific about like purebred chocolate labs. English chocolate labs, like the you know fat faces and everything. <laughs> and so we wanted a chocolate lab. She usually picks for you which dog you have. Really? So she like, yeah. What, it's like, like intuition? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> like there's a limited amount and you have to get on this wait list and stuff. But somehow we got to pick between two. So we, um, they were named after their collars. So Benny was yellow and then there was green. And so we went to go meet them. I talked to both of them one-on-one -on -one and found that Yellow is going to be a better, uh, better for the road. But green uh, is Benny's brother, and Reagan's family has his brother, so they hang out. No, yeah. so they stay yeah. together. Yeah, wow. I mean they they get to hang out often. Okay, so yeah. in that one-on-one -on -one conversation with Benny, what was the question that really sold you? Uh, I was just like, hey man, like this is <laughs> this your life's going to be unique. Are you up for this? And he Did just he... calmed down and he was ready. Going back to music for a second, question nine. What was the first time you got your first real artist paycheck? It was at a show that I opened for my friend at in Austin. I was doing like a lot of backyard shows at the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, just like parties and stuff. And we were playing at this venue. It was his album release or something. And he was like, oh yeah, you and a bunch of other people are gonna open for it. I did. And then this woman came up to me with a fedora on and she like patted me on the back and then she gave me $25. I was like, what is this for? And, is she uh, also the chocolate lab reader? I feel like no, that's the energy I no, imagine. I, I, yeah, she uh, she was somehow his like booking agent for the show. I don't know, but I, I got $25. $25, yeah, wow, what'd you spend it on? Gas probably, yeah. <laughs> to get to the show. Yeah. Okay, what about the first sold out show you ever played? Uh, it would have been that Scoot In show. It's sold out, which is cool. So first show ever was sold out and I feel very spoiled. <laughs> Yeah. That's amazing. Question 11. First time you found out you sold out your North American tour. My first, like the first first tour never happened because of COVID. And um, I remember like a week before we left, I knew the whole thing was sold out. That was nuts. But I'm glad it didn't happen because I think I wasn't ready for a tour yet. Oh, really? Yeah. Why do you say that? I just, I don't think I was prepared for it to happen. Mm. Uh, and so I'm glad that it didn't, although it would have been pretty sweet. Yeah. Also, it's kind of cool to be like, I sold out an entire <laughs> North American tour and never. that nature stopped. Yeah. That is pretty epic. Yeah. That's pretty epic. Mm -hmm. After being on tour now, what do you think is like the most surprising thing about tour that you were not expecting? You have to have a routine. I don't, I don't know like how it would be surprising necessarily. Maybe that it's not that surprising. Like oh, you kind of like it's like, what you imagined. You, you got it. No, well, no, like you have to be bored often, and so that's like huh. something you have to get used to. Is like, what are you gonna do with this one empty space in your day, but also in a place you're not familiar with? Mm. So if you don't, if you aren't proactive with the schedule, you'll go a little crazy. Ooh, is there anything that you like would do in cities? Did you like getting souvenirs? Like, was there anything you do in that boredom time? I mean, I'm kind of like weird about this kind of stuff. So I got this this portable sauna. It's like a sauna blanket. I get in that. I sauna really? pretty often, yeah. Huh, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's fully like a blanket? Yeah. Do you not suffocate? <laughs> like, it, is your head out? It gets, yeah, it gets pretty hot. So I like, I do saunas and cold showers every day. So you're, um, you're battling all of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The mm -hmm. cold, the mm -hmm. heat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what about, going back to tour, question 12, the first writer you ever made, what was on the writer? So I didn't know about writers. I thought it was pretty sweet that we got free stuff. I try to have as little as possible. Tour can really? be so wasteful. It's like, it's kind of ironic. Like when people like artists are usually the ones like, like make a change in the environment. And it's like, we're so waste so much plastic and stuff. So oh. I'm like, I try to have as little as possible. What's on the necessities list? I like sparkling water. That's mm. like my one thing. I'm like, I, that's nice to have. Are you day. particular about the brand? Like, are you a LaCroix? Do you like LaCroix Trader sweet, Joe's? But first writer, I think was gummy bears. That's what you had to have, the yeah. gummy bears? I just thought it was funny to do that. And then I'm, I don't know, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, what about question 13? What was the first big celeb you ever met? I'm so bad at networking. My, I have a friend um, named Nico who makes music as Boy Pablo. And we were like friends via the internet. And then we became friends in real life. Ooh, that's, that's always fun when that of. happens. Yeah, yeah. But as far as celebrities, like I have no idea. Okay, yeah. you're not gonna like my next question then. <laughs> I was gonna say question 14, who is the first celeb to slide into your DMs like or share one of your songs on their stories? Or is there anyone big oh, that reached yeah. out to you? I remember one of the first things that Can I Call You Tonight had this like momentous uh, moment was Emma Chamberlain had reposted it on her story and oh, I didn't know who she was at the time. It was big to a lot of people that I knew. They were messaging me all this stuff and uh, like I, I didn't know about it. Like she, she just did, which is amazing. And that's so great for my trajectory because the algorithm just took off after yeah. that, I guess. And then she like started wearing my merch in her videos and stuff. What? I was like, you know, that was cool. Um, but did you ever exchange any like messages with her back and forth? Not really. I mean, I was just like, thanks for doing that. And then uh, every <laughs> once in a while, we still haven't you know, gotten to meet. So that'd be awesome. Yeah, I don't know. She's very famous. That's a great so, one. That's yeah. a good story. Mm -hmm. I get updates about what she's doing through fans and stuff. Like that's, <laughs> you know, it's great. <laughs> that's so funny. Last question, question 15. What was the very first thing you did when you finished your new album, People in Motion? I released it while on the road. So uh, I played a show. Yeah, it's it's like, this record is very much made for live performance. Mm. And um, the way that I see people approach making music, it seems like live performance is at like the bottom of the list often, where it's mm. like, that's the least of the worries. And for me, I'm like, I wanna make a live show. It's about music, you know, so. Yeah. Do you feel I, like that changed because of the pandemic and not playing shows? Or do you just feel like more in general as artists? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I just love performing live. And uh, this album is very much made for that. So it was nice to, let it out while we're on the road and yeah. see what happens, you know? Okay, well, before we let you go, I have to talk about this too. It's so amazing to me, this was so cool that you conceptualized, produced, wrote the entire album mm -hmm. all by yourself, mm -hmm. which I feel like in this time, it's so rare. Was that something like, that? was that always important to you? Was that something that just kind of happened? What did that look like? I grew up in a small town in Texas where I assumed that artists were completely involved in what music they're making. Like I assumed that the lead vocalist of this band had a say in how the bass was mixed and everything. And uh, that's not really the world that we live in, but it's the world that I do. So I um, <laughs> I just assumed, you know, and I viewed the world that way and yeah. uh, taught myself how to play everything. It's been really fun to have that creative control. And I think to like a fan or a listener, that's really refreshing to have that like transparency that they know exactly where something came from. Obviously, now that you know how it works a little bit more, you're mm -hmm. in the industry, would it ever change the way that you do future albums? Like, would you want to have some collaborators? Or do you like kind of doing it by yourself? Maybe. I mean, I love doing it by myself. Like, I I really love being in the studio and making music. And uh, I really look forward to when I can do that again. I don't know. I, I would love to produce for somebody else. Like, I'd love oh. to be a uh, the producer role. Who would be yeah. like the dream artist to produce for? Harry Styles. <gasps> yeah, Harry Styles. Oh, you know, did on. you see? Did yeah. you see Harry on tour? I mean, I've seen. I feel like I have. <laughs> if, if you have the internet, I mean, it's everywhere. His videos are you know, everybody's uh, explore page. I know? love that. I could see that. Yeah. Okay, we need a Daglo Harry collab. It'd be great. Daglo, thank you so much for being here. Can we give it up one more time for Sloan, Mr. Glow, Daglo? And of course, thank you all for watching. Make sure you go stream Daglo's new album, People in Motion. It's out now on iHeartRadio, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.